Hi friends! I thought I would read to you today from my backyard. The Mouse and the Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary. Illustrations by Tracy Dockray. We'll do chapters three and four today. Chapter three, Trapped. Even though Ralph woke up feeling sick and dizzy, his first thought was of the motorcycle. He hoped it was not broken. He sat there at the bottom of the waste basket until the whirly feeling in his head stopped and he was able, slowly and carefully, to stand up. He stretched each aching muscle and felt each of his four legs to make certain it was not broken. When Ralph was sure that he was battered but intact, he examined the motorcycle. He set it upright and rolled it backward and forward to make sure the wheels still worked. One handlebar was bent and some of the paint was chipped off the rear fender, but everything else seemed all right. Ralph hoped so, but there was no way he could find out until he figured out how to start the engine. Now he ached too much to even try. Wearily, Ralph dragged himself over to the wall of his metal prison and sat down beside the apple core to rest his aching body. He leaned back against the side of the waste paper basket, closed his eyes, and thought about his Uncle Victor. Poor, nearsighted Uncle Victor. He too had landed in a metal waste paper basket, jumping there quite by mistake. Unable to climb the sides, he had been trapped until the maid came and emptied him out with the trash. No one knew for sure what had happened to Uncle Victor, but it was known that trash in the hotel was emptied into an incinerator. Ralph felt sad and remorseful thinking about his Uncle Victor getting dumped out with the trash. His mother had been right after all. His poor mother gathering crumbs for his little brothers and sisters while he, selfish mouse that he was, sat trapped in a metal prison from which the only escape was to be thrown away like an old gum wrapper. Ralph thought sadly of his comfortable home in the mouse hole. It was a good home, untidy but comfortable. The children who stayed in room 215 usually left a good supply of crumbs behind, and there was always water from the shirts hung to drip dry beside the wash basin. It should have been enough. He should have been content to stay home without venturing out into the world to look for speed and excitement. Outside in the hall, Ralph heard footsteps and Matt, the bellboy, saying, These new people in 215 and 216, somehow they got the idea there are mice in the hotel. I just opened the window and told them that the management wouldn't stand for it. Ralph heard a delighted laugh from the second floor maid, who, a college girl, was working for the summer season. Mice are adorable, but just the same, I hope I never find any in my rooms. I'm afraid of them. There were two kinds of employees at the Mountain View Inn, the regulars, none of them young, and the summer help, who were college students working during the tourist season. If you don't like mice, you better stay away from that knot hole under the window in room 215, advised Matt. The sound of voices so close made Ralph more eager than ever to escape. No, he shouted, his voice echoing in the metal chamber. I won't have it. I'm too young to be dumped out with the trash. In spite of his aches, he jumped onto his feet, ran across the wastebasket floor, and leapt against the wall, only to fall back in a sorry heap. He rose, backed off, and tried again. There he was on the floor of the wastebasket a second time. It was useless, utterly useless. He did not have the strength to tip over the wastebasket. Ralph was not a mouse to give up easily. He considered his problem a moment before he rolled the motorcycle over to the wall of the wastebasket. Then he seized the apple core by the stem and dragged it over to the motorcycle. By putting his shoulder under the stem end, he managed to raise the core until it was standing on its blossom end. But when he put his front paws around it and tried to lift it, he found that he could not. The core was too heavy to lift up onto the seat of the motorcycle. Ralph was disappointed, but when he stopped to think it over, he saw that even if he could manage to get the apple core on top of the motorcycle, it still would not be high enough to allow him to climb out of the wastebasket. Bruised and defeated, Ralph dropped the core and decided that he might as well be thrown out with the trash on a full stomach as on an empty one. He took a bite of apple and felt a little better. It was the best food he had eaten for several days. 
juicy and full of flavor and much better than the damp Zwieback crumbs the last guests had left behind. He took several more bites and settled down to a hearty meal, saving the seeds for dessert. Two ant scouts appeared on the rim of the wastebasket. Go away, said Ralph crossly, because he did not like to eat food crawling with ants, and because it embarrassed him to be seen in such a predicament. The ants left as silently as they had come. When Ralph had eaten his fill of the apple, he curled up beside the core. He only hoped that someone might happen to drop a Kleenex over him. It was bad enough to be carried to one's doom in a wastebasket, but to be carried to one's doom by a shrieking maid was unthinkable. There was one tiny ray of hope. If someone did happen to drop a Kleenex over him, he just might have a chance to jump and run when the maid tipped the basket up to empty it into the incinerator. The thought that the boy was sure to miss his motorcycle and start looking for it kept Ralph tossing and turning behind the apple core until, stuffed and exhausted, he finally fell asleep. Chapter 4. Keith Ralph did not know how much time had passed before he was awakened by the lamp on the bedside table shining down on him. He squeezed himself into the tiniest possible ball, wrapped his tail around his body, and tried to make himself as thin as the apple core. My motorcycle! shouted the boy the very first thing. Somebody stole my motorcycle! Uh Uh-oh, thought Ralph. It won't be long now. Nobody stole your motorcycle, answered the boy's mother from 216. It's around someplace. You just mislaid it. You can find it in the morning. You'd better get ready for bed now. No, I didn't mislay it, insisted the boy. I put it right here on the table beside my sports car. You'll find it someplace, said his mother, not much interested. Boys were always losing things. While Ralph cowered behind the apple core, Keith opened the drawer of the bedside table and slammed it shut. He jerked back the bedspread, yanked the pillows off the bed, and threw them back. Then he got down on his hands and knees and looked under the bed and the table. Ralph wrapped his tail more tightly around his body. Here it comes, he thought. The boy's face appeared in the opening at the top of the wastebasket. Ralph's heart raced like a motor. Ha, said the boy to himself. Here it is. I wonder how it got there. His hand came down into the wastebasket to seize the motorcycle and lift it out. Still leaning over the wastebasket, he examined the bent handlebar and the chipped paint. That's funny, he remarked aloud. It must have rolled off, but I don't see how it could. The boy did the natural thing for a boy to do. He looked into the wastebasket again. Ralph closed both his eyes tight and waited. He wished he had not eaten so much of the apple core. If he had not been so greedy, the core would have been thicker and he would have been thinner. Hey! whispered the boy, obviously very much surprised. How did you get in here? He was careful to keep his voice lower than the sound of the breezes in the pines outside the window. Ralph did not move. He was grateful to the boy for not touching the apple core, even though it really was no protection at all. Psst, whispered the boy. Are you asleep? Still, Ralph remained motionless, except for a slight quiver of his whiskers, which he was unable to control. The boy was silent, but the mouse could feel the rhythmic drafts of his breathing. The boy must be thinking, but what was he thinking? That was what was worrying Ralph. No, said the boy to himself. No, it couldn't be. Couldn't be what? wondered Ralph, who was beginning to feel cramped from crouching behind the apple core. Hey, wake up, whispered the boy. That was the last thing Ralph wanted to do. Come on, pleaded the boy. I won't hurt you. Ralph considered. After all, what did he have to lose? If he stayed in the wastebasket, he was almost certain to get dumped into the incinerator. He might as well come out from behind the core. If he did, he might find some opportunity to escape. Cautiously, he moved his head from his paws and opened one eye. The boy was smiling down at him. Encouraged, Ralph opened the other eye and lifted his head. That's the stuff encouraged the boy. Now, come on, tell me, did you or didn't you ride my motorcycle off the bedside table? This took Ralph by surprise. He had not expected the boy to guess what happened. Well, yes, 
I guess you might say I did, confessed Ralph, rubbing his aching muscles. I thought so. Neither the mouse nor the boy was the least bit surprised that each could understand the other. Two creatures who shared a love for motorcycles naturally spoke the same language. That must have been some accident. Did it hurt much? Oh, some, answered Ralph with a display of bravado. Anyway, I didn't exactly ride it. I really coasted off. The telephone rang and startled me. Now how about getting me out of here? Just a minute, said the boy. How did you get up here in the first place? Climbed, stupid, on the telephone cord. Ralph instantly regretted his rudeness. He had better watch his tongue if he expected any help in escaping from the wastebasket. Oh, of course, said the boy apologetically. I should have thought of that myself. At that moment, there came a quick knock on the door to room 215 and the rattle of a key. Help! cried Ralph. The maid! Don't let her see me! Before the boy could do anything, the maid burst into the room. Oh, excuse me! She seemed surprised to see a boy kneeling by the wastebasket. I've come to turn down the bed. That's all right, said the boy quickly. I can do it myself. Thanks anyway. Thank you, said the maid backing out of the room. Ralph knew she was not anxious to waste time turning down the bed. As soon as she finished her duties, she was going out to the parking lot to meet a busboy, a college boy whose job was clearing tables in the dining room. Whew, that was close. The boy seemed every bit as relieved as Ralph. I'll say, agreed the mouse. Keith, called his mother from 216. Are you getting ready for bed? Sort of, answered Keith. You'd better come in our bathroom and take a bath, said his mother. Ah, oh, gee, Mom, do I gotta? Answered Keith. Yes, you do, said his father. And don't forget to brush your teeth, said his mother. I won't, promised Keith. Then he whispered to Ralph. You just lie low. I'll hurry and take a bath and get into bed and turn out the light. And after Mom comes and kisses me goodnight, we can talk some more. Lie low indeed. Ralph was indignant. He couldn't lie much lower if he wanted to, and he certainly did not want to sit around waiting to talk. He wanted to get out of that wastebasket. Once he was out, he would see about talking, but not before. Ralph could hear the boy splashing in 216's bathtub and then hastily brushing his teeth in 215's wash basin. After this, there was the sound of a suitcase being opened and clothes dropped on the floor. The boy hopped into bed, and to Ralph's relief, the light was turned out. In a moment, Mrs. Gridley came in to kiss her son goodnight. Night, Mom, said the boy, sounding as if he were already drowsy. Good night, Keith, said his mother. It looks as if we're going to have to stay here for a few days. Your father refuses to budge. That's okay, muttered Keith, giving the impression he was almost asleep. Good boy, said his mother. You're a good sport. Good night, son said the boy's father from the doorway between the two rooms. Keith did not answer. Instead, he breathed slowly and deeply and, as Ralph thought, a bit too noisily. There was no sense in overdoing things. As soon as all was quiet in the next room, the boy swung his legs out of bed, fumbled around in his suitcase, and shone a flashlight into the wastebasket. Almost blinded by the unexpected light, Ralph held his paws over his eyes. Hey, cut that out! He could not remember to be polite. Oh, sorry. The boy laid the flashlight on the bed where its beam shone across the wastebasket rather than into it. That's better, said Ralph. Now how about getting me out of here? As an afterthought, he added, please. The boy ignored the mouse's request. How would you like to ride my motorcycle? He asked. Ralph's heart skipped a beat like a motor missing on one cylinder. The mouse-sized motorcycle really would run after all. And there was one thing certain. Since the motorcycle really would run, the boy would not expect him to ride it around in the bottom of a wastebasket. Sure. Ralph tried to sound calm. The important thing was to get out of this prison. He braced himself, dreading the touch of the boy's hand on his fur. To Ralph's surprise, the boy did not reach in and grab him. Instead, he slowly and gently tipped the wastebasket on its side permitting Ralph to walk to freedom with pride and dignity. Thanks, said Ralph, genuinely grateful for this consideration. I believe you're okay. I'm sure I'm okay, said the boy, setting his motorcycle down beside Ralph. 
Did you think I wasn't? You never can tell. Ralph put his paw on the handlebar of the motorcycle. It's a royal beauty, even with a bent handlebar. I'm sure sorry about that. Forget it, said the boy reassuringly. It won't hurt much. The motorcycle will still run. Ralph threw his leg over the motorcycle and settled himself comfortably in the seat. Perfect, just perfect. The boy was obviously delighted that his motorcycle was just right for a mouse. Ralph could not agree more heartily. It was perfect, except for one thing. He did not know how to start it. Well, go on, said the boy. Ride it. Ralph was ashamed to confess his ignorance. I, I don't know how to start it he admitted. It's the first motorcycle I ever had the chance to ride. You have to make a noise, the boy explained matter-of-factly. These cars don't go unless you make a noise. The answer was so obvious. Ralph was disgusted with himself for not knowing without asking. He grasped the hand grips and, fearful lest his noise be too squeaky, managed a <laughs> Sure enough, the motorcycle moved. It really and truly moved across the threadbare carpet. Ralph was so excited that he promptly forgot to make the noise. The motorcycle stopped. Ralph started it again. <laughs> this time he remembered to keep on making the noise. He sped off into a square of moonlight on the carpet and found a good threadbare spot without any bumps. Look out for your tail, said the boy. Don't let it get caught in the spokes. Thanks for reminding me, said Ralph causing the motorcycle to start. He started again and steered with one paw while he reached back with the other, caught up his tail, and held the tip safely against the handlebar. It was a glorious sensation, speeding around on the carpet freely and noisily and most of all, fast. Ralph discovered that if he made the noise fast, the motorcycle speeded up. If he slowed the sound, the motorcycle slowed down. He promptly sped up and raced around the rectangle of moonlight where he made another discovery. When he ran out of breath, the momentum of the motorcycle carried him on until he could take another breath. Gee, you're lucky, whispered the boy. In order to answer, Ralph had to stop. I am? It had never occurred to him that a mouse could be luckier than a boy. You sure are, the boy spoke with feeling. My mother would never let me ride a motorcycle. She would say I might break a leg or something silly like that. Well, if you want to come right down to it, said Ralph, I don't suppose my mother would be exactly crazy about the idea. He began to have an uneasy feeling that he really should be getting back to the mouse hole. Anyway, said the boy gloomily, it'll be years and years before I'm old enough to ride a motorcycle. And then when I'm old enough, my mother won't let me. Ralph really felt sorry for the boy hampered as he was by his youth and his mother. Go on, write it some more, said the boy. I like to watch. <laughs> Ralph started the motorcycle again and rode around in the moonlight once more, faster and faster until he was dizzy from circling, dizzy with excitement, dizzy with the joy of speed. Never mind the danger. Never mind what his mother thought. This was living. This was what he wanted to do. On and on and on. Lucky, whispered the boy with envy in his voice. Ralph did not answer. He did not want to stop.